Investigate rumors of an underground railway. You've heard of a less than legal organization operating out of the steam and sapphire yards. Oh, that must be the new line, right? They pay for information and may offer work to the bold, the clever, and those willing to displease Her Majesty. <laughs> we are certainly willing to displease Her Majesty. Reach out through your criminal contacts or investigate them myself. Unlock this with Affiliation Villainy 2. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. You have friends in low places. Perhaps they know something. Your connections are reluctant to talk. I hear the Deniables have been sniffing about. Less known the better. London's Deniable Constables, the plain-clothed instruments of Her Majesty's displeasure, are a persistent superstition of the underclasses. Eventually, a dubious rag-and-bone man directs you to one of the engine houses. Talk to the bookkeeper. He'll see you, right? Yeah, that is the new street line. He occupies a tiny, smoky office cobbled together from corrugated iron sheets in the back of one of the engine sheds. It's stacked with nicotine-stained nicotine, nicotine -stained account books and boxes full of oily brackets. The bookkeeper looks up as you enter and gestures to a chair. Oh, we could trade a lot of things if we wanted to. Oh, wait, these are all gratitude. Oh, this is trading favor. How do I get gratitude? Chat with the bookkeeper. He offers you a cup of tea, savagely stewed and swimming with sugar. Learn how you can be of use to the new street line. A job on the side. He is deaf, but can tend to communicate through sign language or messages scribbled on a pad of paper. Obliquely, he explains that he does additional work for an organization unaffiliated with the government, which has an urgent need for up-to-date reports on other parts of Albion. Oh, the new straight line! That's... That's going to be basically the Tacades of this region, right? Has an urgent need for up-to-date reports on other parts of London, so they're going to be the people that I turn import reports to, right? His patrons will pay for such intelligence to be brought to them, rather than the Ministry. What's more, he implies, earning the organization's trust might open up the possibility of additional work. Deliver Albion port reports to the stalwart stalwart bookkeeper to receive rewards. Nice. So it, it's interesting. Um, they communicate through sign language or messages scribbled on a pad of paper. Does that mean that Elizabeth understands sign language? I wonder if... I wonder if sign language is commonly understood by people. Uh, I keep... <laughs> My tendency is to say, like, people in the Reach, as if, like, the Reach is the whole world and that comprises all the people, but it doesn't. It feels like it was the world because I was in it for so long, but it's not. All the people in the skies. I guess that works better. There's probably still some people down there on the Untersee, though. But, uh, anyway, yeah, I wonder if sign language is commonly known by people in the skies. Mm -hmm. So gratitude then is just is just just like gratitude with the Tacities. Same thing. A thing that you gain when you turn import reports. It's interesting that the Tacities don't seem to have any presence at all. At least that I've seen so far. Uh, in Albion. Only in the Reach. It's interesting. It's nice to have different factions. And, I mean, even these different factions are kind of... They seem like they're loosely aligned, or at least they have similar goals and similar interests. Because the stalwart bookkeeper working for the, the new line doesn't want information to go to Her Majesty. And I don't know much about them, but it seems like they are more focused on profit and, like, contraband and things like that. I think they're more just about giving the finger to, the, to Her Majesty. Well making some money in the shadows. I think they're more about that than like trying to get any sort of freedom, it seems like. More profit-focused than the Tacities. So 
So that's all that. Let's go to the Ministry of Public Decency. A whitewashed building near the Throne of Hours, crammed with a top-hatted horde of auditors, inspectors, and correctors. The Ministry curates the notion of Britishness with all the care of a lepidopterist pinning a butterfly to a board. Oh, we can visit the Hourological Office. Remember we were told about that like it pretty much at the beginning of the game by that person who came on board and wanted us to deliver them to Port Prosper to work on the clock. Let's go there first. Tick, tick, tick. Albion's heartbeat. Clocks of diverse size and shape line the walls of this small gray office. Each is meticulously tuned by the royal horologists and inspectors as practice for the thankless complex task of ensuring the consistency of time across her renewed majesty's territories <laughs> this is a hell of a right if i point over there it covers it up that's a hell of a portrait over there they look very grumpy <laughs> they look very grumpy and that's a really cool thing that they're wearing on their on their head obviously like some magnifying things on their right eye for seeing clockwork things up close since those clockwork parts tend to be pretty small but what is that on the left eye it just looks red i don't know what it is hmm. oh so much to do inquire about employment speak to the chief horologist he sits hunched in a thick gray blanket his crow-like stare fixed on a disassembled clock. His gears are almost too small for the eye to see. One empire, one time, one date. <laughs> Times change, I've heard. Well, not if I have any say in it. <laughs> he reaches for a pair of tweezers, the pincers barely thicker than a human hair. The time in London must be the time in Brabazon, in Whirlbury, in New Winchester, in Lustrum, to the second. It is the privilege and duty of this office to ensure that continuity. He sniffs. A task that was considerably easier before we began spending hours like shillings and sixpences. Now it might be yesterday in one place and next week in another. It's most untidy. Yeah, I imagine all the barrels of unseasoned hours and whatnot kind of throw a wrench into the works. Let's look at the clock of Albion. From this side, it's a polished wonder of valves, pendulums, and cogs working in perfect harmony. Only the finest engineers were permitted to work on it. Every component is encased in polished glass. The hands sharp enough to slice paper slide between the exquisitely carved numerals with buttered smoothness. Only the second hand is permitted to jump from moment to moment, and it does so with the precision of a military march. It's just for tourists, of course, grumbles a bleary-eyed apprentice. Albion's time's really based on the old TikTok man's pocket watch. He keeps us straight. Except that time on his 19th, 19th, not 19th, 90th birthday when he had one too many and the whole of Albion lost two hours. <laughs> what? Old TikTok man's pocket watch. Who's TikTok man? Let's examine the array of clocks. They all have the names of ports within. Albion and the Reach. Lustrum. Brabazon. Port Prosper. Despite the vast distances involved and the complicating effects of local hour usage, all the clocks show the same time. Each of London's territories is expected to run on Albion Standard Time. But London is a long way from them. Despite being a commandment from the Empress's own lips, it's a law more often breached than observed. Ask about the nature of hours. Yes, please. Oh man, I've been wanting to know more about hours for a long time and how they're used and how does time work in the skies? Their use remains poorly understood. The chief horologist doesn't bother to hide the weariness in its voice. No, despite the imaginative claims of certain penny dreadfuls, ours can't take you back to yesterday, nor leapfrog tomorrow. 
but with the use of our looms, a week's journey can be made to take a day, or a prisoner can endure the ten years of his sentence while only one year passes outside his cell. A work world can perform a month's labor in a week. A lifespan can be stretched. The Empire, comrade, runs on hours. Yeah, that doesn't explain much. Please go on. You're not going to go on at all. That illuminated nothing. Thank you. Inquire about employment. Not just anyone can become a royal horologist. The chief horologist looks surprised at your inquiry. Horologists tend to be cut from a specific cloth, a rather grayer fabric than that worn by a skyfair. However, you have the right to take the examination if you wish. He blows the dust off a textbook and bids you sit down. No calculation devices or writing implements are permitted. Oh, we're going to take a test right now? <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I guess we're taking a quiz. The chief horologist peers over the book. Yet the current time in Perdurance is exactly 1715 of the clock, and the time in Albion is 1834. What, pray tell, is the current time in Lustrum? Hurry up. I don't fucking know. Eighteen thirty four? That is your answer. Very well, we shall continue. And now, a tricky one, perhaps. The chief horologist coughs. The train from the Brabazon work world arrives at eleven thirty in London. The current time shown on the master Brabazon's clock is, he winces, fourteen thirty. If the train took exactly one hour to make the journey, it does not, of course. I merely offer this as a hypothetical for the sake of testing. Uh, what was the accurate time of its original departure from the work world? Uh. Wait. Took an hour to make the journey. What was the real time of its original departure from the work world? Well, I mean, if it arrived at 11, then the original time would be 10.30, right? It took an hour. It arrived at 11.30. It left at 10.30. He pauses for a moment before writing your answer down. You wait patiently for several minutes, but the third question doesn't seem to be coming. The chief horologist's eyes have drifted close. A thin string of drool dribbles from his otherwise dry lips as he snores. <laughs> Nudge the chief horologist. Gently, the fellow must be pushing a hundred. He wakes with a start. <laughs> oh, excuse me. He glances at your answers. Well, you seem to have the idea. No point in going through the other 248 questions. Congratulations, you're now officially a royal horologist. Apprentice third class. <laughs> really? Okay. I guess, wow, I guess it's actually really easy to get employed by them because nobody even bothers to try. He pauses. Speaking of which, I have an assignment for you. Temporal inconsistency. A suitable test of your practical skills. Take this pocket watch. It is both your badge of office and your compass, pointing to the correct time. Wear it proudly. Keep it well wound. Do not get it wet. The smaller gears are quick to rust. Okay. Wait, so what is the assignment? Temporal inconsistency, a suitable test of your practical skills. And then they gave me a watch. Okay, but what is it you want me to do? Is there something new in my journal? Time is slipping around the Empire. Your current assignment is in Port Avon. It is? They didn't mention anything about Port Avon. Weird. Oh, the game's getting laggy because I'm... Uh, someone told me the game gets laggy when you have lots of text. Like, you've been going through lots of text and it's built up. Um... Because I think if we go... No, I don't... Hmm. Like, when you go through a long conversation or something, then you can scroll up through everything you just did. And I think it's when that gets long that it gets laggy, but, like, I can't scroll up. There's something to scroll up, too. So, what's... What's laggy? Uh, hmm. Maybe that fixed it? I think so. 
Ministry of Public Decency. A huge horseshoe-shaped building of white stone, white columns, clocks, and iron gates. Inside, its walls are paneled with dark wood. Crimson carpets, worn by frequent passage, flood the floors. Within its cubbyhole offices, auditors toil to protect the sensibilities of Londoners here in the heathen sky. <laughs> Ooh, what is all this? Request an appointment regarding intelligence you've gathered. Learn how you can be of use to the Ministry of Public Decency. Oh, this is probably where you would turn in port reports if you were working for London. Yeah, trade gratitude to reduce your unwanted attention. Yep, this is if you're on their side. Request an appointment. I mean... No? No. I don't even want to speak with them. I don't want to be of use to them. I want to see if now that the new line knows me, maybe that's considered trusting me? And we can now do the Shed 4 Charlotte thing? No. Yeah, I must be in favor, so I need to actually turn in some port reports and stuff. Fair enough. I'm just acquainted with them. They don't really know me very well. Let's take a look at the shop. So we've already been to the bazaar. Yeah, we got the prospects. Take a look at the market. Nothing interesting. Spitalfields Market, a busy market arched with glass and steel. Things cost the same here. Nothing different there. Can sell anything you want, really. Nothing different there. So we already looked here as well, at the new ship. But what we haven't looked at is St. Dominic's Augmentations, which I'm guessing is weapons and equipment for your ship, right? Yes, what do you have? You have an assaying device! This is where you get the assaying device. Oh my god, and I have a lot of money too, so like, I could actually buy stuff. Maintained by the Ministry, this yard for engine improvements and enhancements is a cut above. Yeah, so let's see. Let's see what's new. These are all the same except for the saying device. Cozy cabins. That's old and old. It's probably going to be like the addition of tier three stuff is going to be a big thing. Like this it was. That's already there. That's been there. That's been there. Yes, this blue stuff that is not available. That is tier three. Can I use any of it? Does it have requirements? Iron at fifty plus. That's not happening. Iron. Veils. Hello. Veils. Ah! A weapon that takes veils. I wasn't expecting that. I was thinking maybe I'd be kind of screwed over because my iron isn't very high and all weapons would require iron. Um, well, let's actually look at that. Portsmouth House. Her renewed majesty's jubilee. <laughs> Up my Britons on my chariot on my chargers. Trample them under us. An eruption of hateful radiance with a light homing ability. It can be detonated remotely and with enormous power. Must be mounted in a large weapon slot. No, I don't have one of those. Damn, I would need that other ship. It's got a thousand range. Ooh, it make it gives it gives a lot of heat though. Sixty. So it tells you damage and blast damage. I think the addition of blast damage was added in a patch that was released on March 8th. So yeah, obviously you can choose when to blow it up, and if you blow it up near the ship, you still do damage to them. So I guess the big advantage of that is that you don't have to... You know, like, imagine fighting the Scribe Spinsters, how hard it was to hit them with rockets. You don't have to directly hit them, you just get near them and blow it up. That would be the advantage of it, plus the super long range. But the disadvantage, though, is that I don't think you'd want this to be your main weapon. This would be good at very, very long range. But up close, like, the damage to heat ratio is very, very bad. 15 damage for 60 heat, compare that to... 15 damage for 25 heat. 5 damage for 8 heat, yeah. So that's going to have to wait, obviously. What about this? Ratty baggage handlers. Where do you want it, Captain? Over by the ammunition? Terrible idea. Look, just give it here. I mean, the lads will put it away properly. You just keep the cheese coming. 
Wait. Ready baggage handlers. So am I hiring... I'm, I'm hiring rat baggage handlers. And that's not using the rat brigade? No, that they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't be baggage handlers. They've got other jobs. Other skills. 11 hold. Um, it takes up an auxiliary slot. What do I have in my auxiliary slot right now? Hmm. I have this, so I could replace that. And I'd have 11 hold instead of 8. Yeah, that'd be a pretty nice upgrade. I might as well get that right now, right? And I can sell this, so I'll make a little bit of my money back. Okay, let's do that. Oh, hold on. Let me... Wait. Why did I put the wrong thing in? Why did I put the wrong thing in? 19 out of 15. Yeah, so it looks like they allow you to temporarily have over your limit of items when you're, like, switching out things like this. Which is nice. It would suck to have to store everything in the bank or just, like, you switch this item out and suddenly you lose half your supplies. There we go. 26 hold space. That's so good. You know, I originally got all these quarter things, all these like plus quarters, partly because I think the ship started with eight quarters, which is pretty low, but also because I needed tons of people to do the expeditions in Trader's Wood. I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to take that out. Oh, what happens to my extra people, by the way? Do they just disappear? Yeah, they just disappear. We just kicked them off. <laughs> Here, have fun in London. Yeah, so I have an auxiliary slot, so I can go back to either mining, but I've already done that before. Let's do something more interesting. The speciometer assaying device. A sophisticated machine for the sophisticated captain. Never be confounded by the wonders of the high wilderness again. Yeah, I've always been curious what those things... All those things you can going to say, what they do, what they'll give you... Like, what happens when you look at them? What's this exclamation mark? Is something wrong? Am I over... I'm not over hold space or anything. Why is there an exclamation mark? Anyway, I am going to sell this. Do I have any reason to keep this? No. No, I I don't think I do. It's worth 580, actually. I am going to keep the cozy cabins in case I need those again, though. Can't find anything else I want to buy. So, yeah, I've got upgraded hold space and the ability to assay. And next thing I'm next big thing I'm saving up for is the Aggravane class juggernaut cuz I want that weapon, which means I need a big weapon slot. And this has that plus other bonuses. It's honestly it's just better in every way, literally. It's either the same or better. So much health. And it's actually not that far out of reach. Like I actually had enough money to buy it before I bought these things. Got about 5,000. I need 6,000 to buy it. Of course, I'm going to need another couple thousand to buy the really expensive rocket launcher. To go into the heavy armament slot. Not that I have to buy the rocket with the ship. I could put my small weapons in the big armament slot. Apparently that fits just fine. Uh, but yeah, saving up for that. I think that's everything except Jubilation Day. So, if you don't remember, because it has been a while. Oh, by the way, I have not figured out why my hold has an exclamation mark. I even left this and then redocked. And, oh, yeah, there we go. And nothing. So, I have no idea. Anyway, if you don't remember about this ambition, because it has been a very long time, remember the encoded message? Well, let's go back before that. Remember our old friend, 
the earnest agitator. Yeah, they gave the gave me the encoded message, and then after a little while, I managed to decode it. And that's when they told us the stars are dying. And they also told us to meet them again on Jubilation Day. Which was, I think, about a year from when the game started? Or something like that? It was a while. Um, keep in mind that I don't think it is Jubilation Day right now, specifically on September 4th. I think this Jubilation Day thing pops up if it's the day of Jubilation or after. So you don't have to literally be here only on the specific day. According to what somebody told me. Meaning, I don't actually know when Jubilation Day was, but it's probably been a while given how long I've waited to go to Albion. So, should hopefully, for the first time in at least a year, meet with the Earnest Agitator again, our old friend. Remember, Elizabeth has that that pact with them, have, supposed to have their back. During Jubilation Day, London celebrates its conquest of the sun that once ruled Albion. Clergy of the new sequence, backed by exultant choirs, preach from every balcony, exhorting the light and order of the man-made clockwork sun. Banners flutter from state buildings. Hosannas are sung to the queen. Fireworks crack in the sky, dying in brief blazes. The last time you saw the earnest agitator, you attended the festivities together. Turn to the place you last saw your friend. It's not yet time? Wait, it is? Huh? It isn't? Maybe it just means I have to do a couple things here to, to like, pass the time. Let's watch the burning of a gilded effigy. In Hyde Park, where avenues are lined with bronzewood saplings, broad as old oaks, crowds have gathered. The old king. Flames lick at the king of ours' shins. His guilt peels and blackens. When the fire reaches his waist and one arm cracks and falls into the conflagration, the crowd cheers. When you were here with the earnest agitator, she seemed distracted. Once you caught her watching you, the firelight gold on her face. When you asked what the matter was, she said nothing and turned away. Let's purchase a bag of rubbery lumps. <laughs> they don't taste like they did back when London lay in its gloomy cavern below the earth. Presumably one can't get the lumps. But lump substitutes have been invented. It is best not to speculate upon what hides within their crunchy batter. You've been chewing this one for some time, for example. And the less you know, the better. When you were here with the earnest agitator, she bought one bag of lumps for you and two for herself. She considered herself a connoisseur. Yes, now it's time. I'm scared for the Earnest Agitator. Are they still alive? I'm... I'm scared for their safety. I mean, why did they have to pass me an encoded message to... to tell me the stars are dying and to meet them? I think they actually didn't meet us in person, though. Back when they gave us that message, I think they had the message delivered to us and it was waiting for us at like a bar or a tavern or something at Winchester. So it could just be encoded because they didn't want anybody else to like, it could have been read by many people along the way. Rather than there might be somebody listening in on me. But still, I'm worried for them. Soon the clocks will chime at eleven, the hour you parted. The two of you had walked to the edge of Southwark Isle in order to escape the crowds. Surrounded by the sky. London sprawls across plates of sky rock connected with bridges, funiculars, stairs, and in less salu salubrious cases, ladders. Salubrious. Hold on. Salubrious means either health-giving, healthy, or, and I think this is the one used here, it's uh, talking about a place, pleasant, not run down, agreeable, high class, luxurious. I think that's what they're talking about here, unless salubrious cases, ladders. 
Southwark is one of the higher plates. A simple railing discourages you from its edge. The clockwork sun is behind you, dimmed for the night. Stretching before you are darker skies, studded with far, fierce stars. Below, where the lower, poorer districts are caked in smog, the sounds of ruckus celebrations continue. The clocks begin to chime. Your friend is not here. You find a bench and wait. Fireworks flare and whistle. The clocks strike twelve at precisely the same second. The horological office keeps them to perfect time. Still, there's no sign of your friend. The clocks chime one. She's not coming. Shit. Now I'm really worried for their safety. Your friend missed your appointment and your appointed meeting. Track down where they've been living in London. Ambition, find your missing friend. The earnest agitator did not come to your arranged meeting. Something is wrong. The seasoned captain said she was spending most of her time in London. She must have lodgings here. Speak to mutual acquaintances. You'll need to reacquaint yourself with a number of people you've also lost contact with. Takes two salons to gossip. You focus your efforts on the dark factories where, when the last shift had ended, revolutionaries gathered to enact the schemes of their calendar council. No one has seen your friend in some time, but not at all since the fire. The fire? Apparently there was a fire in the building where she rented rooms. No bodies were found, but she hasn't been seen since. You're able to secure the address. Visit the burned building where your friend lodged in London. Whoa. You know, heat. I mean, you think of suns and, and heat and the sigils causing the very air to sear. I wonder if they were messing with something related to the suns and maybe that caused the fire. A mysterious fire. The building your friend lived in was a narrow lodging house divided into too many apartments. Now it is a blackened husk, still standing only because it's wedged between houses on either side. Constabulary have boarded it up. A pair of homeless gentlemen occupy, occupying the opposite doorway are happy to tell you about it. Uh, we saw it. They said it was a gas fire. Burn blue, didn't it, George? R, says George. Blue. R? Are they a pirate? Blue, huh? Search the ruin. You understand that your friend lived in the garret. Whoa, that's quite an image over here. Prying aside the boards, you enter. The fire stink claws at your throat. Thin stairs, warped and blackened, lead upwards. But when you set foot on the first step, it collapses. You're forced to inch up, testing each one as you go. The roof has collapsed, exposing the garret to the air. Blackened beams jut like ribs from a slew of tumbled tiles. Search the ruin, but carefully. The building's shell groans in the slightest wind. You unearth a few burned pages from the rubble. None are untouched by the fire, and many are blotted by rain, but you manage to pick out a handful of gnomic phrases. Constellations and conjunctions. Chrysanthemum. Amaranth amaranthine. Nepenthine. Liberation. Meg, the fire that follows, the courtesy's blood. King of Hours, Green Regent, consult the rolls of ash. This latter one has the bedeviled Didac's name written at the top. If Meg is Spatchcocker Meg, that's two of your acquaintances from the Promise of Days named in these papers. Is this the important work they were helping the earnest agitator with? It's time they talk to you. Right, yeah, the Bedevil Didact. Meg, Spatchcocker Meg. Yeah, those are the people that handed me, the, the friends that handed me the note, the encoded letter, back in New Winchester. Seek the assistance of the seasoned captains at New Winchester. And with that, I believe we're done with London for now. Wow, 
that was a lot to do. And so fascinating. Oh man, there's so many things to do now too. So many places to explore, and now I kind of want to go back to the Reach to like, go continue the Ambition quest. So many possibilities, I love it. But for now, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to level up, and then I think we're going to explore Albion. <laughs>